Good morning. This is Friday morning, June the 11th, and this is today's edition of Glimpses of Grace and Glory. I'm a little late doing this because after school yesterday, today's the last day of school. It's a half day, and yesterday we had 10 students who had received the Lord and they asked to be baptized. So at 4 o'clock p.m., we baptized 10 students with all their families here. What a glorious scene it was. We did it outdoors. Today, I want to continue our thought about the faith and the action of faith. You know, Hebrews tells us, or, or James tells us that without faith, uh, without action, without works, tells it works, but action, um, then faith is really of no value. So in other words, faith that is just mental consent is really passive. Uh, maybe we would say, the faith is not a proven faith. Faith is when you consider the object of faith. The object of faith is Jesus Christ, and he's always faithful, he's always able. So let's consider the object of faith. You know, there was a story about a, a tightrope walker. He walked across Niagara Falls. First he said to the people, do you believe I'm able to do this? Yay, we believe you're able, we believe you're able. He walks across. He gets on a unicycle. Do you think I can cross on a unicycle? Yeah, we believe it, we believe it. He crosses. It gets to the other side, and he says to the crowd there, do you believe I can go backwards on my unicycle? Yeah, we believe, we believe. He goes across. He says to the crowd, do you believe I can go across on my unicycle with a grown man on my shoulders? Yay, we believe, we believe. He said, all right, I need a volunteer from the audience to get on my shoulders. No volunteers. So the words are there, the mental consent is there, but to actually step out and to know that, hey, this is my life, I'll bet my life that this is true. Well, you can bet, you can bank on Jesus' faithfulness, that you can put your life on the line because he is always faithful. You know, Jesus was preaching one time, and he was at the Sea of, it says Gennesaret, but it's also called the Sea of Galilee. And he wanted to talk to the people, and when there's that many people thronging you on the beach, uh, it's a little hard. So he asked, he got in Simon Peter's boat, and he said, we'd would you move out a little bit and let me talk? Because uh, I don't know if you ever went fishing at a lake, but you can be whispering around a lake early in the morning. People are fishing. You can hear all the way across the lake. So Jesus, of course, knowing this, since he created all things, he was preaching the gospel from Peter's boat. And when they were finished, as a thank you, he said to Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And Peter said, Master, and now Peter's a professional, fish, professional fisherman. So were James and John who were, who were in a nearby boat. He said, Master, we worked all night long, dropping that net, pulling the net, dropping the net, pulling the net, and we caught nothing, nothing. And you're saying, let down the net again. We already cleaned our nets. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. At your word. Everything's impossible. We've already proven. We've put forth 100% human effort by people who really know what they're doing, and all our wisdom and all our efforts were totally fruitless. They were came to nothing. But at your word, if you say let down the net, the net's going down. And he dropped the net. The net was so full that of fishes that they had to beckon to their partners, James and John, they came over with their boat. They filled both boats with fish so much that the both boats started to sink. And God just blessed them. He let down the net at Jesus' word. And when he followed Jesus' word, the victory was enjoyed. Now, how about this? Let's apply that to our lives. I prayed about this every day. I prayed for the supply of my needs every day. I've prayed about this condition at work every day. I've laid hands on the sick. I've prayed for this healing. I prayed for this victory in my family. I've prayed for overcoming power. And is there any point in doing it again? Is there any point in declaring God's victory again declaring what the word of god says i've been declaring it sometimes you tell people declare it i've been doing that what do you think i've been doing 365 days this year i declared it and still nothing well the word of god comes do it again they let down the nets over and over but when the word of god came when the promise came peter said at your word we will let down the net and the victory was enjoyed never give up always take the word of god believe the word of god and God will always keep his promises. He doesn't change his mind, and he's not a liar. You can believe what God says. The Lord just give us strong and believing hearts, helps have an active faith, not a passive faith. That at your word, whenever you say go, we go. When you say stop, we stop. When you give a promise, we claim it, we declare it, and we believe it, and we will see the victory.
in Jesus' name. Amen.